Hello, welcome back everyone to our Ant tutorial series. Today I'm going to be taking you through part four of our annotate tutorials. And within this video, we're going to be taking a look at the different tracking methods that we have within the annotate filter. So there's three different tracking methods. The first one is a manual tracking where the user is controlling the tracking. We have a software assisted tracking, and then we also have a keyframe tracking too. So I'm going to take you through the three different ones and how you can use them and the best situations in when to use them. So let's start off with the manual tracking. This was the first uh, tracking method introduced into Annotate. I would say that the as I show you the tracking methods, and I go through them, um, they get better as I show you them. Um, and this is the same order that they were implemented. So when annotate filter was first introduced, we relied on manual tracking. And then we quickly improved the tracking uh, in our updates to the point that we've got three different ways of doing it. So the first way, the manual tracking. Let's do something uh, very common, like a spotlight. So I've got my annotate filter already loaded up and my video loaded up. I'm going to make a spotlight like we've seen how to do in the previous videos, like so. Now, when we play a video and we've got an annotate selected, and if I just play this, you'll see that the annotate then starts to stay on the frames that have been played. And this is why when we're reviewing what we've done with an annotate, we make sure to deselect it so that if I jump ahead in a video, it's not going to remain. If I have an annotate selected and I jump ahead in a video, that annotate is then going to be put onto those frames. But this same uh, behavior is how we can do the manual tracking. Now, to do the manual tracking successfully, I would recommend that you reduce the speed of your video. If the video is playing too fast, it's going to be too difficult to keep up with the movement um, as you're tracking. So I'm going to bring this down all the way to 0 0.2. And then the way to do this is we just select and hold our annotation. And I'll just make it slightly bigger. We select and hold it, and then we just move as the, as the video is moving. So I'll play it, and I'm just going to follow the movement. So you can see it's a quick way of doing it. The spotlight, when you do the manual tracking, the slower you can play the video and do it, the better. The smoother your spotlight is going to end up looking. And I'll stop there. So now I need to deselect that spotlight to review. And I can play this video back. And we can see how that spotlight went. This is a manual way to spotlight something. It's quick, it's easy, it's efficient, but you definitely need to make sure you've got that speed lowered. So I'm going to delete this annotation. And remember that what I just showed you there for the spotlight will work for any of the annotations. I'm now going to show you the software assisted tracking. So let's time, this time, let's make an annotation on our person. And we're going to do a magnify of our individual. So remember, we select magnify. We can create our area to be zoomed. I'm going to take my blue dot, place it on the individual. So I'm set up now to start my tracking. Now, if I want to use the software assisted tracking, we access this through this tracking option in the uh, magnify filter settings. 
and you have this tracking option in all of the annotations. So again, it works for all of them. And to start the software assisted tracking, first I need to tell the software what we're tracking and where. So I'm going to press the track button once. And when I do that, you'll see that these two squares appear, these two different colored squares. This green one in the inner and the yellow one on the outer. The inner green one, this is what I want to be tracked. So I'm telling five, the subject within this green square or rectangle, I want to be tracked. You want to make it fit around your subject as tight as possible. The yellow rectangle then, this is telling five where the movement could be in the next frame. So we're saying this person in the next frame could be within this section. So we know that the direction is moving. So behind him, I can make it very tight. And in front, I need to have a little bit of space where I believe he can move. Because we've got 30 frames per second in this video, he's not going to move very far between frames. If we had a low frame rate video, I would need to increase the size of this because the movement difference between frames is going to be larger. So for this video, I'll keep it quite small. And then with that set up, all I need to do is click and hold this track button. And you'll see now as I'm holding it, if you look in the top left, he's been tracked throughout the video. This will be a very smooth transition. The tracking is very smooth because the software is doing it. It's not relying on me holding down the annotate. I'll stop there, deselect, and then we can review it. You can see we get this nice smooth annotate now. So that's the software assisted tracking. Again, it works for all the different annotations. So I'm going to make a new spotlight on our vehicle. And I'm going to use that software assisted tracking. But this time I'm going to show you a limitation of it. And the limitation of the software assisted tracking, and I'm just going to set this up just the same. So the vehicle fit inside yellow where it's going to be. Next. So the limitation of this is that it's relying on what's inside this green rectangle. So if I begin to track this, and you'll see that as I get towards the um, the trees in the video, they go in front of the vehicle. And because the trees go in front of the vehicle, we'll just wait until we get there. Because they go in front of the vehicle, it makes it hard for the software to understand where this vehicle is because it's been covered up. And you'll see right at this point that that spotlight begins to fail and it's not tracking the vehicle anymore. So this is the limitation with the software assisted. I'm just going to remove this magnify so it's not distracting. Again, if we just play this back, you'll see it's working perfectly and then the trees obstruct what we want to track and it fails. So this is a good time to introduce the third tracking method, which is keyframing. So I think everyone's probably used keyframing before in other pieces of software. If not, basically what keyframing allows us to do is set two frames with a certain amount of distance apart. That's up to the user how far apart the keyframes are, you set the position and the size of the annotate for those two frames using the keyframes and every frame in between will be interpolated. So the position will be interpolated and the size will be interpolated. So what we can do is as this begins to fail, I'm going to then switch to keyframing. Now to use keyframing, all we need to do is right click and go to toggle keyframe. And you'll see in the top left of my annotate, I get this symbol to say we've got a keyframe now. 
And then I can jump ahead in my video, move my position and size again, and make a new keyframe. And if I go back now and review this, you'll see that because I'm now switching to keyframing, it will follow it perfectly. This video is a little bit tricky for keyframing because you've got two different accelerations going on. The acceleration of the camera moving and then the acceleration of the vehicle moving. And neither are constant. So it's hard to for the software to interpolate the position all the all the way through. But we can make a few more keyframes on this and test it out. And if it ever comes to a point where it loses the position, so Let's see if we jump ahead. What we can do is we can just insert a new keyframe to fix it. So I'm going to jump ahead quite a lot. And I'm going to expect that we're going to lose um, the position here. So I've jumped ahead a large distance. And you'll see that it will begin to lose that keyframe so now it loses it there comes back and it's probably going to lose it here as well because it's taken the quickest uh, route from a to b unlike the vehicle that's moving around so anytime that we lose that annotate all we need to do is just make a new keyframe so i can move the position toggle keyframe jump ahead a bit keyframe we can use the u key as well on our keyboard if you prefer to use shortcuts so now that i've added the new keyframes this section where it drifted off it should now remain within the vehicle Okay guys, so those are the three different tracking methods. So we've got the manual tracking, the software assisted, and the keyframes. Remember, everything I showed you there works for all the annotations. So even if I just wanted to do something simple, like if I delete this, if I just wanted to do something simple like an arrow above our suspect's head and track his movement, maybe... We're looking at a video with a lot of moving people and we want to make sure we're keeping focus on this one person. Again, I can use any of these tracking methods with this to track him. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, make sure you ask us and I look forward to the next part of the annotate tutorials. Take care, guys.